Hey, this is Presh Tallwalker. You have a painting that you want to hang up on the wall. You can imagine your viewing angle of the painting, which is your viewing angle between the bottom and the top of the painting. This will obviously depend on many dimensions. Suppose this point is O, which is parallel to your eyesight. The wall is perpendicular to that. And suppose the top and bottom of the paintings are points A and B. Let's say OB is equal to 18 and AB is equal to 14. Suppose your eyesight is at point P. Obviously, as you move closer or farther away, you will change the viewing angle APB. So if you move very close, it might change. If you go very far away, it might change. So the question is, what distance should you be viewing the painting at? That is, what is the length OP such that the angle APB is maximum? I thank FAM for the suggestion. As an interesting historical note, this was asked in a letter by Regio Montanus in 1471. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. I will present two different ways to solve the problem. One method primarily uses trigonometry, and the classical method actually was using geometry. So let's get started with trigonometry because this is a typical problem that students are asked today. So let's set up the problem. We'll start with the coordinate system. Suppose the point O is at 0, 0, B is at 0, comma B, A is at 0, comma A, and P is at X, comma 0. Let's label the angle APB as theta. Let's label the angle APO as alpha, and we'll label the angle BPO as beta. Now theta is equal to alpha minus beta, and theta is an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. So we want to maximize theta. Now in the range 0 to 90 degrees, tangent is an increasing function. So this is equivalent to maximizing the tangent of theta. Why are we going to do that? Well, let's work it out. Since theta is equal to alpha minus beta, we can substitute the tangent of theta is equal to tangent of alpha minus beta, and then we can use the tangent formula for the difference of angles. This is equal to tangent alpha minus tangent beta all over 1 plus tangent alpha times tangent beta. Now we can solve for tangent alpha and tangent beta using the triangles. So here in this large triangle APO, we see that tangent alpha is equal to the opposite side, which has length a, divided by the adjacent side, which has length x. So tangent alpha is equal to a over x. In triangle BPO, we can solve that tangent beta is equal to b divided by x. So now let's just focus on these formulas. We will substitute in for tangent alpha and tangent beta. We now want to simplify this. A convenient trick will be to multiply the numerator and denominator by x squared so that we can get rid of the fractions in the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator will become x multiplied by a minus b, and the denominator will become x squared plus ab. So why have we done all this work? What we have now done is we have set up the problem so that we have a function of x. This is a function of only the variable x because a and b are unknown constants. We now want to maximize this value. So that will be equivalent to maximizing f of x. A standard way to do this is to use calculus. We'll take the derivative and we're taking the derivative of a quotient. So you could remember the derivative of a quotient or you have high divided by low. The derivative of this is equal to low d high minus high d low all over low squared. So we can substitute in here. It'll be quite a complicated derivative, 
but don't worry, it'll simplify quite a bit. So f prime of x is equal to low, that's x squared plus ab, multiplied by the derivative of high, that's the numerator, x multiplied by the quantity a minus b, minus high d low. So high is the numerator, x multiplied by a minus b, multiplied by the derivative of the denominator, which is x squared plus ab. This is all divided by the denominator, x squared plus ab, the entire quantity squared. So the derivative of x multiplied by a minus b is just going to be a minus b, and the derivative of x squared plus ab is equal to 2x. So we can substitute those in. Now let's just simplify a little bit more. We can multiply the x by the 2x to get 2x squared. Now in the numerator, we can factor in a minus b. So we'll get a minus b multiplied by ab minus x squared. This is all over x squared plus ab, that whole quantity squared. So let's look at this derivative f prime of x. So one term is a minus b, and this is an unknown constant. Now a is the distance to the top of the painting, b is the distance to the bottom of the painting, so a minus b will be greater than zero. Now what about the denominator? We have the square of x squared plus ab. Now we know that a and b are greater than zero, so the square of x squared plus ab will also be greater than zero. So the sine of the derivative only depends on the sine of the other term, which is ab minus x squared. So there are three cases to consider. If x squared is less than ab, the derivative will be positive. If x squared is equal to ab, then ab minus x squared will be equal to zero. The whole derivative will vanish. And if x squared is greater than ab, then the derivative will be negative. So we see the derivative is going to be positive until x squared equals ab, then it's negative. That means the function is increasing until x squared equals ab, and then it's decreasing. So when x squared is equal to ab, the function has a maximum. We can solve this, that x is equal to the positive square root of ab. We of course want a positive distance on the right side. So that's our solution. x is equal to the square root of ab, and a and b are unknown constants. Now just for fun, I wanna show you another way that we could have done this optimization. So let's say we get to the step, we wanna maximize this tangent of this angle, and we have a function of x. So instead of using calculus, here's another way to approach it. You could use the AMGM inequality. That's the inequality of the arithmetic mean and geometric mean. So maximizing this fraction is equivalent to minimizing the reciprocal of the fraction. Now, a minus b is a positive unknown constant, so we can just ignore this term. It has nothing to do with x. So this is equivalent to minimizing x squared plus ab all over x. So let's simplify this fraction. If we divide through by x, this is equal to x plus ab divided by x. We now have two terms. We can now apply the AMGM inequality that this sum of these two terms is greater than or equal to two times the square root of the product of these two terms. This is the AMGM inequality. And interestingly, the minimum will happen when you have equality, and that will happen exactly when these two terms are equal to each other. So the minimum occurs when x is equal to ab divided by x, and that means that x squared is equal to ab, or x is equal to the square root of ab. So it's kind of fun to know there's a different way to solve this problem that you don't have to do that complicated derivative and analyze it very carefully. You could apply this AMGM inequality to figure out that x is equal to the square root of ab. So let's apply this formula to our problem. So the point B is at 0, 18. Then we add 14 to get that the point A is at 0, 32. And we want to solve for the point P, which is x, 0. So applying that A is equal to 32 and B is equal to 18, x is equal to the square root of 32 multiplied by 18. And that works out very conveniently to be 24 units. 
And that's the answer. So now, let's work out the problem in another way, which is using geometry. So most students learn the problem in calculus class. But by way of history, this problem was posed in 1471, and modern calculus as we know it did not exist. So how did they even approach the problem in those days? They used geometric concepts. And while it's a little bit of a magical solution in that if you know what the correct answer is, you can show that it's the correct answer, I still think it's interesting to show that geometry can be used as some way to approach these problems. So here's how we set up the problem. Let's say we have a line L right here that goes through point O that's perpendicular to the line ABO. We're going to construct a circle through the points A and B that's tangent to the line L. There's actually a unique circle that'll do this on the right-hand side. So let's see how that works. So the first step is take this length OB and copy it above the point A. Call this point B prime. Construct a circle with diameter B prime O. Then from the point B, construct a perpendicular to the diameter. Label this point as C. Draw a line through C that's perpendicular to the line L. Then call this point P. This will actually be the optimum point. Now call this point M, which is the midpoint of AB, and construct the perpendicular bisector of AB. So where this intersects with the line going through PC, call this point E, this will be the center of the circle. So we have circle E with radius EP. So this will be needed in our proof. So let's just focus on this circle, the points A, B, and P. So amazingly, P is the solution. That's the point at which you should stand. It'll be the circle that's tangent to the line L that goes through the points A and B. This is absolutely amazing. So why is this the solution? So to see why, let's construct another point P prime on L, which is different from P. So we have one angle, BPA, and we have another angle, BP prime A. And we want to prove that the angle BPA has a greater measure than the angle BP prime A. So how can we do that? This will involve some geometric concepts. So first, Construct the point Q, which is the intersection of B, P prime with the circle. Then construct A, Q. Now what can we say about the angle B, Q, A? It'll exactly be equal to the angle B, P, A because both of these are inscribed angles in the circle of the same arc, A, B. Next, consider angle Q, A, P prime. Q, A, P prime plus B, P prime A will exactly be equal to B, Q, A. This is because B, Q, A is an exterior angle in the triangle Q, A, P. So its measure will be the sum of the other two angles. Now, for any other point P prime, we know that we can substitute in right here. So we have BPA is equal to QAP prime plus BP prime A. This angle QAP prime will always be greater than zero for any other point P prime, and that shows that BPA will be greater than BP prime A. That's exactly what we wanted to prove. So point P is the optimum viewing angle. Now from here, we just need to figure out the distance OP, and we can do that using the tangent secant theorem. So the square of the length of OP is equal to the length of OA multiplied by the length of OB. So we have that OB will have a distance that's equal to lowercase b, and we have that OA is equal to a distance that's lowercase a. OP, we had said, was equal to x. So substituting in, x squared is equal to a times b, which is exactly what we had before, giving that x is equal to the square root of ab. 
Now recalling that a is equal to 32 and b is equal to 18, x is equal to the square root of 32 times 18, giving that x is equal to 24. And that's the answer. So it's interesting that we can solve the problem in another way using only geometry. What a question. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.